What's up everybody, my name's Chance, and today we're going to take a look at a Gruul Lithoform Dawn Waker combo, sort of. So Lithoform Engine reads, you know, pay 2, copy target activated or triggered ability, pay 3, copy target instant, and pay 4, copy target permanent spell. Now the permanent spell is as you're casting the spell, so you have to pay that 4 as you're casting your creature as well. So generally, you know, if you wanted to copy Terror, it's going to cost you 9 mana, which is ridiculous. It's almost the same cost of casting down another Terror. So what Zirda adds to this is being a 3 mana card that allows you to reduce the cost of your activated abilities and all of these on Lithoform Engine are activated abilities. So you're going to be reducing it by 2 and it can't be reduced to less than 1. So the first two abilities are only going to cost 1 and the third ability is still going to cost 2 but still that's only 7 mana. You get to copy your Terror to the Peaks, you get to copy your Elder Gargaroth. If you do use Lithoform Engine and copy a Mutate creature or copy the Mutate effect you are going to get that creature's mutated again. Does that make sense? Like you're not going to get, if you copy a Migratory Greyhorn mutate, you're not going to get another Migratory Greyhorn to hit the battlefield. You're going to get another mutate effect of the Migratory Greyhorn, if that makes sense. So be cautious with that. I may or may not have made a mistake with that one. Um, but it is still super fun. And uh, since the combo is like turn three zero to turn four lithoform, um, and obviously you can have your Lotus and your Gilded Goose come down before that. Copying things like your Elder Gargaroth, Sterix, and Terror of the Peaks is very, very realistic in this deck. And all it requires is that you keep these things alive. Now, to help out with the deck, a couple copies of Ranger's Guile, a couple copies of Heroic Intervention might not be the worst idea. We decided to go for removal in our instance and sorceries. We have a Rural Eruption, right, which really helps us out. Um, and of course, Thrill of Possibility, which allows us to draw additional cards. And if we copy Thrill of Possibilities, we don't have to discard an additional card. We just get to draw two extra cards. So really good there. Uh, Phoenix of Ash, I figured this is one of those cards that copying it, one, cool beans, right? You're getting another 2-2 flying haste creature. And two, zero to reducing the cost of it means that to pay to get it plus two plus oh, it only costs one. So you can keep spending all of your mana there right it's a great mana sink if you have the lotus cobra down and you keep playing lands you're like man where are we going to spend this you just boost up your phoenix vash next up we have cultivate and ruling regrowth i would actually recommend cutting out either the copies of cultivate or cutting out two copies of ruling regrowth because honestly with the micro great horn and with uh lotus cobra and the goose you have plenty plenty of ramp already in the deck so i, I don't think you need these and what i would recommend putting in is either some more removal or some more things for lithoform engine or like i said the rangers guile heroic intervention i think all of those things would work very well scoot swarm we have in the deck because obviously we're playing this sort of landfall deck and we're mutating onto creatures and nothing feels better than when you mutate a sterics onto a scoot swarm and then you play landfall and you just get tons of sterixes right uh Kazandu mammoth y'all have seen this a lot it's it's a great card honestly it's it's a fantastic card i love the design love the creature love the land beautiful Zero that we talked about. Gem Razor is to help proc your mutates, not to mention the fact that it gives your creatures reach trample. And again, if you get this onto Scoot Swarm and then you copy it, boy howdy, you're going to have a nice board, right? <laughs> uh, Migratory Great Home, we talked about. Lithoform Engine, as we said, can copy literally everything in your deck. Like, everything, right? Um, Terror of the Peaks, really good. And since we're going to be playing things like Sterix and Elder Gargaroth, it's... It can hit, right? Gem Razor, Mercury Great Warren, copying these things. Obviously, if we have Scoot Swarm mutated and then we're copying our Scoot Swarms with Terror of the Peaks, that's going to be one big bad machine gun in effect, right? Sterix, of course, helps us draw out all of these permanents that we want on the battlefield all at once. And then Elder Gargaroth is just that big bad uh, creature that we kind of want to be copying with Lithoform, right? Now, all this being said and out of the way, there are multiple, multiple, multiple ways you can choose to take this Zirda Lithoform combo. You can take it into an Omnath deck, you can take it into a Teamer Adventures deck, right? There's so, so many. But the main point is, this is beautiful. This is a relatively cheap way of copying everything, right? One mana, you can copy your activated or triggered abilities. One mana, you can copy your target instant or sorcery spells. That's insane. And four mana, you can copy a permanent or two if you have zero to down, right? So all in all, very fun deck, very spicy uh, little combo or interaction, if you will, between these two. And if you can find a way to hit them more efficiently or to hit them more frequently, I think this deck has got some definite merit to it. And again, 
you know, the main the main little piece of this is the zero to lithoform. So if you're trying to adjust or whatever, feel free to change up the rest of the deck however you want to. I just want to see what people can come up with with the zero to lithoform. Can we find any infinite combos? Can we make this better in some way? Can we make it more efficient? Can we make it to where we hit it every single game? Basically, is what I'm trying to find. Anyways, thanks everybody so much for watching the Deck Tech Breakdown. I hope you all enjoyed these as always. If you do and you're new here, please be sure to subscribe. It's a great way to support the channel as well as give you more info on when I post videos, which nowadays is a hell of a lot, right? We're, we're here on YouTube in the mornings. We're here on YouTube at nights. We're on Twitch in the mornings. We're, we're putting out so much content. It'd be a shame for you to miss it. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to hit that bell icon. Leave a like if you enjoy it. And be sure to answer the daily questions or comment on the pro tips if any of them help you or if you just find yourself engaged with them, right? All that being said and out of the way, let's go ahead and hop right to our match. Lucas Trion. Trion? I don't know. We're just... Damn it. <laughs> I do want this hand because we have the zero to... Fuck it. We'll just treat these as lands. We'll just be like, oh, we just got a three land hand with some really big cards. Sure, I'll be greedy. <laughs> It'll be all right. Fabled. And another land. Well, I mean, that does keep us from having to play all of these down, right? Golden egg. Opponent's playing something weird and something different, and I don't know that I like it necessarily. So I think I am going to... I'm going to go ahead and play down Kazandu. Kazandu Mammoth. And this way we can get down Zerda for sure. I told y'all they were playing something weird. This is some strange ass food deck. Some strange ass food deck. <laughs> I just want to play with my zero to fuck. Assholes. Like, can't can't I play normal fun magic? Does everything gotta be so removal heavy? Can't we both just put cards onto the battlefield and see where it goes? <laughs> Shit. Always gotta be so caught up in not allowing each other to play. Of course, I'm, I'm one to complain, right? I constantly put out decks. It's like, here, play this super controlling deck. Ugh. <sighs> This person, I, they probably haven't played since since this shit came out though. Let's be let's be honest. Look at their deck. I don't think they've played since Eldrain, so should should probably cut them a little bit of slack. <laughs> oh no, there's a, there's an M twenty one card. They're they're doing this just for the fun of it. <laughs> oh um. All right. Well, if you want to play, you want to play hardball. Let's play some hardball. One, two, three, five. So we'd still need two more mana to get the turn timber down. This is such a strange Solta deck that they have here. It's like a self mill, want to find the silver smoke, eat the food kind of deck. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with continuously killing these two. No biggie. No biggie. Do I go for the Sterics? If I just play the Sterics down, we can obviously take some stuff out. But if I mutate it, if I mutate it, Scoot Swarm. Interesting. 
Take out one of these. Take out one of those guys. All right, so we got something to block the Wicked Wolf now. And we can cast Turn Timber, so that's good. We're still looking for our Lithoform engine, though. Our zero to Lithoform engine. Don't think that I've forgotten. Okay. We actually can't do that block. Um, right, because then they'll just eat two food. They can sack something out with Witch's Oven. Eat two food. Yeah. That's okay. I feel like we're probably just going to try to tear the peaks that Wicked Wolf down. And if that doesn't work, then we're just going to uh, Chum Block Areno. Chum block arena. I don't know if this makes any sense. Are they just gonna try to sacrifice? Let's see, one, two, three. Mm, they can get pretty close. They can get pretty close. They'll be up to 10. Right? They eat their other golden egg and then tap with goose. No? Oh, and this way they get to bring those back. Cool, cool, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so do we just go for their turn timber and pray? Or we could hit a ruling and start machine gunning that shit? Ruling gives us some scoot swarms. Turn timber could give us something better. See, if I was to play this down. Nah. I think this is actually better. Well, oh, hell, hell, hell. Let me do this first. I think this is what we actually need to do. We'll we'll turn timber next turn. Y'all don't hate me. Don't hate me. All right. Was that just two damage? So finish that thing off. Now we have plenty of defenders. We can start swinging in with these guys. Cool beans. Opponent's down to 16. We have six defenders. We're going to use a turn timber next turn. Ginger Brute's a little annoying as they can pay the one. Nope. They don't do anything. Alright, well it's time it's time for us to play this turn timber. It is time. Hey, there's our Zerda. Cool freaking beans. Cool beans. Cool beans. Dun, 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 dun. Now we can also pay for the Phoenix of Ash now that we have Zerda down. Um let's take you out. And the rest will just send to the face, right? Nice. Good game. Good game. <laughs> Mr. Lovin, 71. Mr. Lovin. I like it. All right. Now, I haven't played with Lotus Cobra in a few games. Y'all are going to have to remind me. How does this card work again? 
You want me to reveal a card so you can discard it, eh? You can have that land, I guess. I think the other stuff is a little bit too important, if I'm being honest. When it's playing Rakdos Rogues, gotta say, not a fan. They're about to be smacking us around. Smack, smack. Ooh. Generally, you, you'd hope to see a land there, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I did sort of give up my right to lands. I, I could have discarded a Great Horn, right? I get too greedy sometimes, you know what I mean? It's Rakdos Party. What does it say whenever you do one damage to any target? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Alright, so we can get down Terror here. We could also get a Great Horn on each of them, and I think that's actually a little bit better. Like, if we go... Great Horn here. Over. Uh, green mana. Alright, and then this will pay for the other Great Horn, and then we just have an extra... Whenever that Great Horn enters, it's going to give us another two mana. Which means we're going to have three. Okay, so this here. Uh, over. Almost went under just by trying to say thanks. And that. And then this will be this. And that will be Lithoform, right? So not bad. We almost played out our entire hand there just by not playing Terror of the Peaks. Not bad at all. <laughs> Uh, went from four mana to six mana, mutated two great horns down, and got a lithoform engine. <laughs> That's okay. Now, problem, if we block here with anything, and then they cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, they can remove one of our creatures. I say we take it. Now, if we can hit a land, what we can do is play Terror and copy it with Lithoform. So we'd have two Terrors, which would be mm, very great. Very, very great. No! We just hit a Thrill Possibility. Silly, silly Thrill Possibility. Fuck. I mean, yeah, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Cancel. Oh, we have to wait until we cast it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I didn't want to mess it up, all right? Is this the most efficient play? I, you know, I don't fucking know. But, I, I wanted to do more than just play a terror, you know? So we are down to 8 health, but I think we're doing alright. We can copy that Phoenix when it comes in. We actually do have enough mana for that. So, Tis bueno. We haven't seen a Zerda, though. That's kind of depressing. Um, does that kill us? No, not quite. Almost, though. <laughs> not quite. Almost, though. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know if we thought this one all the way through. I think we're gonna end up hitting more lands than what we have. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely should have copied the Phoenix. <laughs> oh man. All right, that's okay. We're we're living and we're learning. <laughs> okay. GG. All right. <laughs> that was a sad game. I'm sorry, everybody. I botched that one hard. Hey, it's that one guy, you know, with the stuff and the, the things. Yeah, that one. We'll keep it because I see the Zerda, and I've yet to see a Zerda, so, you know, pretty pretty basic there. Now, we are going to go ahead and throw down our turn timber because I want to hit that Zerda on turn three. Perfectly normal. And we're going to hit this temple, too. I don't think we need another land. Granted, that was a pathway. I know, I know. Um, we're, we're throwing down Zerda maybe into a, into a ruling. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I love the sound Zerda makes. Like, is, what is that? Is that a fox? Is that actually a fox that we're hearing there? Oh, boy. Teamer Landfall. It's been a while since we've seen one of these decks. It's been... Almost 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> All right. Show me what you got, Teamer. Tamir. Okie dokie. Let's go. Actually, save the fabled. I was about to do that all wrong. Play Goose and then mutate onto the Goose because a 3-4 going over a 3-3 three, three isn't too much. But this way we have a flying 3-4, which is, I feel like, a lot better value. And then smack, smack. And I guess here's the part where we hope that they don't just absolutely fucking ball on us. Cause, you know, Teamer, Teamer has a tendency to do that to people. Now, the only unfortunate thing is it means that we can't tap the goose for lands necessarily. I mean, we could, but we're not going to, I guess, is the best. You have a flying 5-4, I have a flying 6-6. Six, six. It's a whole big bad flying world. Oh, if only, if only I had my... Oh... A little lithoform engine. Well, don't mind if I do say. Don't mind if I do say. So, unfortunately, if I did this, it would actually tap both of my attackers. <laughs> we are going to swing it with the Sterex, though, because we still have the Gem Razor down to, to help us blocky blocky. I gotta say, this deck is insanely good at hitting your basic lands out. But we do have the Great Horns and the Rulings and the Cultivates. Maybe we could cut back on the Cultivates, add more, add more removal. I'm a little worried because we, we let them untap with the Terror of the Peaks. And this is a teamer deck, ladies and gentlemen. So we could be in for a world a world of hurt, honestly. Could be in for a No, they're just going to mutate onto it. Oh, yes. Because what I would like to do, if we can hit another mutate target, I think I can proc the Sterics, right? I can proc that triggered ability to cast a second time with the Lithoform engine. I don't know for 100% certainty, but we're going to try. We are going to try. <laughs> we're just hitting lands now. That's well, a little awkward. I mean, we could copy our rolling regrowth, but I, I really don't fucking want to, so. They're down to one health, though. I guess it's not terrible. 
Ah, damn. This also says you control. So I can't copy their Genesis ultimatum there. Fuck. Also, they just hit a Genesis ultimatum. So let's, you know, fingers fucking crossed they don't hit anything good here. Bruh. Fuck you. What? Fuck, fuck you. <laughs> Torknor. <laughs> Tor Torknor. What a name. <clears throat> sure, we can keep this hand. Into a goose. A little loose goose. You want to go for a shocky shocky? We'll see. Nope, no shocks from our opponent. Gotta say, I'm happy to see that. Got to say, I'm happy about that. Lotus, Cobra, 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 Cobra. Alright, so let's say we don't hit a land on this turn. Okay, we hit a land on this turn. Uh, yes, we'll keep that Fable Passage. Oh, psych, we won't keep that Fable Passage. I lied. Still made pretty big plays that turn though, so that's good. And again, we're looking for the zero to looking for the the lithoform engine. That way, you know, every time we go to play a terror or an elder, we can copy it onto the battlefield. Gabby, gabby, gabby. So we can actually play one of these two creatures down this turn. I think it, it is wiser to go for the terror. And then we don't want to swing in, because what if they do some weird tricky shit with their spell gorger, right? Just buff it up insanely. Like that. That's okay, though. So we already... Okay. Super. <laughs> nice. 